Hey guys, and here we are back with another video and I hope you are okay on that side of the screen. Now here we are with Home Assistant and on the last video we saw on how to install Home Assistant on Raspberry Pi 4 or on a Windows machine. So if you haven't watched, just search the, ch the channel and you will find it for sure. Any topic that we approach here, including these sonoffs, we have done a lot in the past. So it's just a matter of searching the channel and you will have all the implementations that I have done. Now, why are we going to do this? We want Home Assistant, which is, for those of you that are not aware, a platform that will allow us to be able to use this brand, for example, Sonoff, to talk with other units. For example, here at the back, I've got my solar PV control unit, which controls basically the power that I generate and the power that my house consumes. And for example, if I want to turn on a device when I reach certain amount of power production, I can do so even without this software knowing that one. So Home Assistant will take care of that. And in this particular video, which will be the first one of integration, we will include the sun off on the Home Assistant without flashing these units. We will use them as they come from factory. Now, in a few days, we will play around with flash and I will share how to do it the easiest way that I found. But at this moment, we are going to follow the easiest way with all the advantages and disadvantages, which I'll share in this video as well. But one thing is for sure, you can implement these on Home Assistant without touching anything in terms of firmware. Now, one thing that you should check out is the sponsor of this video, which is Filmora, a video editing software available for Windows and Mac. Really easy to use, especially if you are a beginner in terms of video editing and you don't need to do professional work or even YouTube videos like this one. You can just edit your family videos, for example. And besides being easy to use, it will allow us to evolve because it has a lot of tools. It has a lot of filters, text transitions, music overlays and elements. And if those are not enough, then there's a store with a few more packs that we can purchase and enrich our library. I will leave a link down below so that you guys can check it out. It has a free trial version, so you can test it out and check it for yourself if it's the software that you want or not. Now, that being said, let's start with this guide, this tutorial, which will be a little bit longer than usual. But first of all, I would like to give the credit to the person that developed what we are about to do, which as you can see on screen is this uh, Peter Buga right over here. So a huge thumbs up for Peter for helping this out and a huge thumbs up for the community that helps out here and there finding bugs and helping here and there so that at the end of the day we have a platform working so these kind of communities a huge huge thumbs up let's start with our home assistant menu which is clean as we did the installation and we already have the file editor that we will need but if we take a look at the um, Peter Berger has son of we link guides uh, you can read everything that is right over here but we will need to copy this text right here and we will need to download uh, this folder. So we will start by downloading this. So clone our download. I'm going to download the zip file and I'm going to save to my desktop, which is a mess, but nonetheless, here we go. And the file is this one here. Now it doesn't matter if you have a Windows or a Mac computer, just unzip it. And if we open the folder, we will have this folder right over here, which is the one that we, we, we need. Uh, but I did include this one as well in my installation, so I'm going to do this as well. And I've been playing around with the debug, but forget about that. Uh, what I'm going to do as well is, like we did on the last uh, video, we um, I'm going to open a new finder. We installed the Samba server for our home assistant, so I'm going to open the network and I'm going to open Home Assistant and I'm going to go to the config folder. Now, on this particular folder, if we go to the instructions, uh, it will talk about a custom components folder, which I don't have at this moment because this is a clean installation of Home Assistant. So what we are going to do, and I can copy the tests so that there's no mistake at all. I'm going to create a folder with this name right over here inside the config folder i'm going to say new folder and i'm going to paste that custom components folder now i only need to do this once 
and I'm going to put sun off there and then in a few weeks if we want to put something else there you can and the, the folder is already created so I'm going to open this folder and I'm going to copy these two files once again I'm not really sure if the debug is necessary at least for this kind of usage but nonetheless I'm going to put it right over there it's identified by sun off and sun off debug so no worries at all and this part it's finished so I can go to the um, web page and what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to copy this uh, text up to the API region and these two I don't really need I'm not using in my main home assistant so I'm going to go my server and I'm going to uh, go to the file editor which we have seen how to install as well on the last video and right over here uh, I'm going to open my config, config configurations YAML and if it doesn't appear right uh, you just need to go to this folder here and then press configuration YAML and it will appear right over here and if you select this one it will appear this one and so on and so forth so what we want is the configuration YAML and I'm going to this line here and I'm going to paste what I just copied and I'm also going to add I'm going to copy from here a line and I can give any title this is optional of course I'm going to call it sun off uh, off so that it's organized I can say devices um, and then in the future if I have, have another set of devices I can uh, give it a different name and I can just look around and see this is sun off this is whatever this is whatever and that's that's basically now what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put my account here the account that I use on my eWi link app for the sun off devices so I'm going to put my uh, email address which is roberto at roberto george.com and i'm going to put my password which at this moment is vasora this is a portuguese word for brush a dust brush i think that's the that's the name and i'm going to delete this and there we go this i'm going to delete as well we we are going to leave the values uh, as they are if you live in the us uh, just change this for us or any other region that you live so i did a mistake and i was not getting uh, any reading so as you can see i forgot the m i'm going to press m and save and configuration and then server controls check configuration okay restart once again okay and the server is back let's check out the notification we have discovered new devices check it out and it's the same but if we go to overview to our first dashboard and if we configure ui and if i press plus right over here now we've got the son of devices right over here and this is it in terms of configuration of the son of devices you can leave right away and start playing around but we are going to put a few examples here now if i want a set of buttons i can just choose for example entities and i've got kids bedroom water heater backyards i've got a lot of devices in terms of uh, in terms of son of devices i can say uh, pool pump i can say another button which is for the uh, micro inversers and uh, this one is just giving me the power uh, i can i want to have a switch right over here micro no 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 no, no, no. and i can have the oh the uh, inverter and i can have i don't know any other button that i want I can have uh, this one so for example if I want to disconnect something right over here I just did disconnect actually it's duplicated this one uh, I can change it right here for this and this is another light that you can see and there we go so everything is working and I can give a title lights for example and this is just optional and light uh, lights okay and let's save and right now I've got a set of lights right over here now we can add a few gorges which I really enjoy so gorge for the water temperature I can just set it here uh, which is my water thingy which is in my roof with solar um, and I can give uh, severity and minimum 0 100 okay green maybe up to 50 yellow 
from 50 from I don't know 70 upwards and red if I put in 94 it will turn to red but if I put in 96 it will stay yellow until it reaches 96 so let's save this and there we go we have the water heater but I can also put another gorge which in this particular case is the power that I'm generating from my microinverses on my roof so I can just put here micro inverter actually there's three of them and I can do the same with the severity let's leave it like this just for this example we can put the other inverter that I've got which is the Solax 2.5 and it's right over here and let's just say Solax X1 2.5 kilowatt hour and save so I've got the and let's put another one I, I really love gorgeous <laughs> let's put the pool pump which is working at this moment so let's search for pool pump pool pump and in Portuguese is uh, bomba da piscina which is drawing 689 at this moment so pool pump and basically this is one example of course uh, we can add other um, other screens right over here one just dedicated for lights one you can you can search around and you'll find a lot of information but for now we have Sonoff working with this example right over here and the best is that in the future we will see here how to implement other situations as I said I've got the my power measuring device at the back which is a completely different system it's the Wii B but with home assistant I can put this one talking with this so if the power generation is at 1500 I want to trigger the S20 for example and if it's 2500 then I want to trigger the pool pump and so on and so forth and if there's a cloud which drops my power I can say hey if the power drops below this value turn off the water heater or turn off the pool pump or anything else and I don't need to be at home and the system will work by its own which is actually doing it right now not on this installation which just for testing and to share with you how easy it is to integrate but my own system is working like that and by the end which will not have an end but with the development of this series we will reach the same kind of integration so that you have an example basically this is it guys in terms of this on off integration credits down below for the peter buga which was the guy that developed everything hopefully i did explain the easiest that i could but there's one more thing that i was about to forget regarding the power management in terms of these values right over here and this is very very important now if we only have one ewe link account this will not work because when i log in to the home assistant it will log out from my phone so i will need at least two accounts and if we only have buttons such as this one to turn on and turn off two accounts is enough that is it but if we have power measurements using the sun off power for example and if we want to have a uh, interval of power measuring of 60 seconds one minute then we will need to have a third account and that for the count the way that I use is one account on my mobile phone which I can access the WeLink app normally one account on my home assistant as you guys saw which was my secondary account and then I've got the third account on this Windows computer right over here running a Android emulator with the app 24-7 connected so that the app is connected to the servers and giving the values and then home assistant will grab those values now this seems a little bit confusing but it's just because uh, the way that we link work is that we are only able to have one account per device if we sign in on another device then that device will be signed off and we will need to be able to have the app open to give data to the home assistant i'm not really sure if you are getting but once you start trying it out you will see that this makes total sense one username for the phone one username for the uh, home assistant and then one username with an, uh, a device that it's always working because i don't want to have my phone with the app always open to have home assistant no i want to have everything automated and that's the only reason that we will need three Counts. and basically that is it guys if you still have any questions drop them down below i will do as best as i can and as fast as i can to answer them 
If the video was useful, don't forget that usual and very appreciated thumbs up. My name is Roberto George and as always, I'll see you guys on the next one.